This tutorial explains the difference between the ggplot2 functions facet grid and facet rep in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this tutorial, I will show you an example and this example is based on the data frame that we can create with lines 2 to 5 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data set is appearing, which is called data. And if you click on this data frame, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains 12 rows and four columns, which are called X, Y, G1 and G2, whereby the columns X and Y contain numeric values and the columns G1 and G2 contain the group indicator and the subgroup indicator. So if we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 7 and 8. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 8 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the ggplot2 package, such as ggplot and geonpoint. So if you run lines 10 and 11 of the code, you can see that a new plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 12 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see that we have created a scatter plot, which is showing all the data points of our input data. So let's assume that we want to draw this scatter plot based on the grouping and subgrouping indicators in our data frame in a facet grid plot. Then we can apply line 14. So in this line of code, I'm using the ggp plot object that I have created before as basement. And then I'm adding to this the facet grid function. And within this function, I'm specifying our main group and our subgroup. So if you run line 14 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that a new facet grid plot has been created. And as you can see, this facet grid contains the subgroups at the top and the main groups at the right side of the plot. You can also see that some of the grid elements are empty. So for instance, the grid element AD does not contain any data at all. And this is very important to note because this will change once we use the facet rep function, as you can see in line 16 of the code. So if we want to draw a facet rep plot, we can use the ggp object that we have created before. And then we are adding to this the facet rep function and we are specifying the main and subgroups in this function. So if you run line 16 of the code, you can see at the bottom right, that another plot is created and this is a facet rep plot and the main difference to the facet grid plot is that the empty grid elements are not shown anymore. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.